All right, welcome to Stampscapes 101, the lab. <laughs> All right, so we have a piece of the printable holographic vinyl sticker paper, okay? The printable is the key thing here, uh, at least in terms of how I'm going to be treating this. It's the shardy, I don't know, kind of, I call it like shardy glass or icicle looking um, pattern here. And it's one that I would, I, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have looked at this and said, I, I would never stamp a scene on this. But, you know, uh, I think these types of things spark, could potentially spark some creativity. So I did an ice cave with this pattern, and it was one of my favorite scenes. I think it was from last year. I'm not sure if it was in 22 or 23, but um, I'm going to try another piece on this. Uh in terms of it being a cave, okay, so I recently acquired a lot of new um, types of uh, media here, and I want to utilize more of that, okay, so the shards of glass type of thing, uh, the metallic ones, this one has uh, multi-colors, and I just feel that it's going to harmonize better with a, you know, a paper that's already pretty loud in itself. Um, I really want to utilize these things because they just look really cool and potentially should be fun in a two-dimensional visual here, making it three-dimensional, you know, in some degree. And I also have all these other things that I uh, haven't played around with uh, yet. Uh, Ultrafine uh, holographic glitter here. There's this black one. Here's this white one. I want to try all kinds of different things and try to expand on the vocabulary of, you know, stampscapes here. And I don't know, I've always thought that uh, kind of going out in three dimensions is one of the uh, the big areas that I think, you know, stampscapes should be really conducive for because I'm thinking in terms of dimension when I'm designing the stamps and... Um, you know, it, it's to do two-dimensional pieces that represent three-dimensional spaces, okay? But if we utilize them in an actual three-dimensional space, it should be, um, you know, something that uh, we should be able to do, uh, therefore. You know, if we can give the, you know, if we can give the illusion that a two-dimensional space is three dimensions, you know, something foreground, mid-ground, background, um, then actually utilizing three-dimensional media, uh, you know, it should be able to um, enhance that whole illusion, um, if not just completely expanding it into a new area here. So we're not doing like, you know, things that are a foot deep or something like that, like a big diorama like that, but if we could just had little types of things kind of raised off the surface, even if it's very uh, minute, like uh, holographic powders or, yeah, I've done a little bit of embossing too, um, which raises things. I haven't experimented with that probably enough, but um, I want to get around to doing some of that uh, a little bit more. Okay, so this is going to represent kind of an opening in this cave where someone is looking from the outside into this cave, okay? It's kind of hard to plan this out, and I'm not going to be planning it out um, in a super detailed way. So what I'm doing right here is I'm concentrating an application of this white brilliance ink, and the white brilliance ink, or just brilliance inks in general, are water-based. So printable vinyl is a water-based type uh, surface. Um, it's not water-based, you know, when they print it, but it has this surface that's uh, made for water-based media, okay? So this right here, after you apply it, it really dries fast. It grabs it, it is stuck on there, and it is completely dry. Well, I wouldn't say instantly, you can kind of still spread it around, but it dries within a few seconds, okay? Now if you really build it up where you're not really touching the surface of this anymore and you're just building up ink on top of ink, It'll stay moist a little bit longer, but it really uh, dries pretty fast. Um, as these types of printer papers are designed to do, you know, you run through a printer, they want it to dry fast on you. They don't want it to be sitting around. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I know where that opening is going to be, and I'm kind of spreading this out 
in a lighter application, a thinner application, so that it looks like light and it's getting, it's dissipating as it moves away from that light source, that opening in the cave, okay? So I want a little bit of this um, trailing off from that entryway. So you really have to utilize kind of a drier application of this and do it in repetition to get these lighter touches down there like that. So you can see what's kind of happening here. See how it dense it is right in there. And then I'm gonna have rocks in here, okay? But I want some of that rock, those rocks in here to be reflecting some of this <coughs> lighting this white light that's <clears throat> coming from out of the cave onto these other areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of oscillate some of this application of white ink. And it, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to kind of imagine where you're, we're going to be placing these rocks in here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do some guessing. And one of the things, the points, hopefully that I'm getting at right here is you don't have to be so precise in terms of your application of this okay a rock doesn't have to go right along that edge right here you know the lighting could be you know a foot into a rock or something like that um, but the thing that's going to um, um, be good is that we, if we can oscillate this lighting so it goes from lighter, darker, lighter, darker, okay? But here's the thing, here's the thing that's also kind of a little bit uh, confusing is that where I want to add some darker tones though too, um, I might want to add this white there so I don't want it necessarily just there for um, this white ink to represent reflected light I might want this some of this white down here so that I can add black colored pencil over the top of it I can't really color this directly with black colored pencil but where I've applied some of this pigment ink I can apply that colored pencil now you say well if you're going to color it with black on top of that well why don't you just use black brilliance down here now I could if I knew exactly where my shadows were going to be you know once I placed my rocks throughout you know I might want this area over here to be a little bit darker and this area to be lighter but see i don't know where that's going to be at this point in time until i stamp out my um, composition so if i just have a surface that's open to any type of tone that i want to add in white or black um it's just it's probably better to do it in black uh white right here so i can make those decisions later okay so, um, yeah, if, if you know where you're going to be placing everything at this point in time, you might be able to save yourself some time by just going straight into uh, black. But uh, again, I'm not really quite sure. Okay, what, one thing that I do know is now that I'm kind of talking out loud and thinking about it is that I know my perimeter here is going to be fairly dark. So... Um, I'll place some of this white. Maybe I'll place some of the, some black over the top of it, just for a little bit of variation. Okay. Now the other thing is too. This is a really, really super dark, uh, um, loud, visually loud surface. Okay. So I'm not just placing this white where. Um, I think there's lighting that's going to be represented or where I want to color it with, you know, black colored pencil and add in shade. But it, I also want to mute out some of this. It's just too loud. If I stamp out anything over the top of this, even in black ink, any color of ink, it's going to kind of be a little bit obscured unless it's a really super solid, big, bold silhouette stamp or something like that, you know, it's um, which I'm not going to be using in here. Um, it, this paper will overpower it, so we're we're muting uh, a lot of it down, just not just to completely obscure it and to block it off completely, like right here, but also just to kind of get this muted tone over the top of it. You can see we're a little bit of white ink over the top of that. It's not as loud a texture anymore, you know, color texture like that. See that? See how loud it is right in here? 
Now I do want some of that though, you know, that's the, that's the point of using it, so. But I just don't want it to be so overpowering that we can't see anything, okay? So we'll just apply this accordingly. And you're saying, well, accordingly, well, where, where do you put it? And again, it's just, okay, so for me, I put it in the entryway right there, and I'm, you know, starting on the perimeter like this, or I put a little bit down here too, but let's start on the perimeter. I think that's an easy way to do it. And I'll go from a little bit of heavier application, and I'll work it in a little bit lighter, okay? Now this perimeter is going to be probably a, a lot darker, okay? I'll put a nice dark vignette around it. So again, I might go with some black on here, I'm not quite sure. But like I said, I can also do it with a, a black colored pencil out here in a more targeted application of sh shadow um, with a colored pencil after everything's been stamped out and I can see where all my rocks are and everything like that. So right now we're just kind of going for a universal application of this white pigment ink. There's a lot of it here. Keep it nice and ergonomic. I could feel my, my shoulders starting to get tired, so I'm going to get back into, you know, uh, a good ergonomic position right here. I, I was kind of extending my arm out a little bit like that, so I'll get it back within my natural range of motion right here. And see how I'm turning this so my hands just naturally lay down like this, okay? This is a lot of repetition, right? I, this is a really big piece of... Um, paper too, you know, my last one, it was a quarter page. I would have been done a long time ago on that. But I wanted to really um, have a big open palette here for uh, kind of the experimentation with that uh, three-dimensional media. Okay, so I have a pretty good application of it here. Okay, and it's right around at the perimeter like this, okay. And it's reasonably smoothly applied, okay. Where you might think, okay, that's, that's great, right? Well, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit blobbier now and irregular, okay. Because I, I think that tends to translate well once we stamp our stamps in here and imagery because it... It kind of varies the lighting on our objects um, a, a lot more than doing things just super smooth, okay? So, okay, so here's what I'm doing. I came in here like this. I imagine like my side of my cave like that opening. Eh, maybe it'll be over this way a little bit more. So let's go like this. And I'm going to have like this um, imagery up top uh, to represent uh, uh, the, the ceiling of the cave. Okay, now that I had this big open area in here, so I'm putting this blob of white right within here. And that'll represent some lighting in that area. A lot of this is theory. Okay, I've, I haven't worked with this paper too much, and I've, you know, I've, I've done a, a lot of cave scenes in the past, but not recently. And uh, I did one recently, like the other day, but I hadn't done, you know, those in a while. So, and there might be some things that I learned along the way with the past ones that I'm kind of forgetting now. But see this right here? It's just kind of an irregular. Um, application of it. I probably need a little bit more down here. Um, that's a big open area right there. I do want this one to be reasonably dark too. Um, because I have these, you know, these different types of uh, media. This one right here is kind of the colors of this holographic. And uh, it's fairly dark in tone, and I want it to kind of match some of that. Um, 
I'm not even sure what color. Uh, this one was like multi, ah, I forgot the name of that one. AP or not. It's got some kind of weird name to it. Uh, the color. And I wasn't quite sure what the initials stood for. Okay, so uh, black brilliance right here. I'm not gonna apply too much of this, I don't, I don't think. Um, because I want to, uh, you know, have the freedom to uh, apply a more targeted application of darker tones later on, okay? All right, so here comes some of this black here. Um, it should be noted <laughs> that when I'm doing this, my applications of this, uh, you know, Brilliance Pigment Ink on here, on the printable vinyl sticker paper, okay, it's never, it's never really that smooth. This paper really grabs that ink really fast, okay, and, uh, you know, that's what we want. We want it to dry nice and quickly for us. Um, but, again, you know, once you stamp your images over the top of it, it, it just kind of blends it all together. So you don't need to have, you know, a really great technique in applying this uh, material. Um, once we stamp our images on top, if you if it's really blobby underneath and it, sh you know, I've, I haven't seen it where it's like, oh, that doesn't look good. Sometimes I specifically make it a little bit blobbier so that when I stamp my images over the top of it, it it's an even greater kind of lighting variation uh, on on the objects. And I think that looks really good. But what I'm getting is if you stamp your stuff and think, oh yeah, I should have spent a little bit more time with something, you can always just add more over the top of the images and you just kind of even things out or blend things out a little bit more, add a little bit more white or, you know, black to it. Um, use your colored pencils, whatever. some throughout the uh, the scene here as well or throughout kind of the interior what we're looking at here is uh, when I'm using all this new stuff I'm I'm looking for kind of a formulas, plural, you know, for um, kind of the most effective usage of things. So you got to kind of experiment around with things. Um, there's usually not one way to do anything. You know, there's ways that just, that might be kind of the most natural way or what, you know, some of the most natural ways something, you know, could be utilized. Uh, um, and sometimes some, there's other ways that might be a little bit more forced, okay? Um, but there's, there's a lot of different ways that can look good with a lot of different things, okay? So, and uh, it's just kind of up to us to just kind of, I don't know, experiment around and uh, try to discover what some of those things might be. Because once you kind of unlock some things, it's like, 
you know, the floodgates kind of can open up, um, you know, for experimentation in other avenues. Sometimes it's just one key unlocks one door, which opens up, you know, another door, two doors or something like that. So that it like wise off into this direction or that direction. And it can really take you on a fun little journey. And like some things, you know, sometimes you'll experiment around with something and uh, you can run into a dead end, you know, um, doing something, you know, so you just kind of backtrack and I don't know, try that, oh, uh, let's try door whatever B next time. And that's just one, you know, kind of branch. It just keeps branching out over and over again. It's really a kind of fun. Um, you kind of get into those areas. If you keep doing enough of that, it's like, um, there's just never enough time. It's like, oh, I, I really wanted to explore, you know, a certain type of thing a little bit more. Um, but, you know, you went down this rabbit hole and you've been doing something else and sometimes it's like you completely forget about, um, you know, these other things occasionally. Yeah, you might not get back to it for months or you might complete about, uh, forget about it completely. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of all in the fun, you know, the fun part about it. Okay, so there's some black. Now, as I look at this, um, as I was applying that, I was thinking, as I was kind of explaining things, how you can kind of go back and forth, um, try things like that out. I'm going to go in. One of the things I haven't really done too much of is I haven't um, gone with some white like that and black over it. Usually I'm doing blocking out with just white, but I'm going to try this now. I'm going to try to go back with white over the top of some of this black right here and see how that, you know, might look. I gotta imagine it's going to be, you know, quite a bit different looking. Yeah, which it does seem to be. See, it's like a different gray. Right over here. I can almost make this into like a spiraling kind of spacing splatter paint some white. You know, uh, Dr. Martin's over the top of it and, uh, you know, make it some kind of... Uh, you know, holographic, um, you know, kind of deep spaced, uh, you know, Milky Way type of thing, which might be kind of interesting. right there. I think that's enough. I think I've kind of muted out some things enough. Ah, or did I? Now that I kind of hold this up to light like that and I'm kind of flashing it around, I'm thinking I might need a little bit more white right down in here. This is a big open area and I want some definition on my rocks, um, you know, of the design. So let's get a little bit more ink right in here. Oh, you know, I'll have some of that, you know, uh, patterning showing through my rock. I don't want to obscure it completely. I think just a little bit of a lighter application around here. Like that. Kind of muting out, kind of in a small way, this area right in here, and we'll leave the more kind of defined, kind of uh, 
patterns uh, in what re represents a you know a vantage point closer to us, which is you know down here. All right. Uh, let's see. So when I'm looking at this from the angle that I am, um, I'm looking at it a little bit of a different angle. But when I kind of tilt this up and I look at it, me like straight on, it it looks different. See, these that's one of the things about the holographic um, types of card stocks. It's just you know it looks different depending on what angle you're looking at it from. You know, there's different lighting on it, different angles. You know, like that, you can barely see any of it. Okay, so I think that's enough. Brilliance Black. And I didn't mention it, but um, I'm planning on doing a... Uh, planning on making this into a... I guess it's a reflection card. Um, maybe more of a horizon card, but... A very shallow horizon, you know, it's just going to be the water down here leading up to the rocks. You know, that might be, I don't know, represent, uh, I don't know, just 20 feet away from us or something like that. Okay, let's see. Let's do this at a little bit of an angle like this. Let's come down like this. I love how um, lifting up my stamps off of the uh, kind of the blocked out backgrounds of uh, this holographic like that and uh, seeing what that looks like. Basically this one I'm stamping it a little bit lower. Going a little bit more horizontal with it. Like that. Okay. And I'm also going to use this on the top of my cave here. It's like the roof of our cave like that. See how we have some of that patterning showing through right in there? And that's where I kind of imagine um, us using some of the, uh, I know, these different types of rocks and things like that, the, the three-dimensional media. Okay, let's see. I'm not sure if I'm done with this one quite yet. Let's get some other... Okay, so just for um, a little bit of a textural range. Okay, so we had this one coming in from this way. I'm going to have these this coming in from this way. Okay. This is the ledge, and it's a much smoother type of rock. So, you know, in geology, you know, uh, you often find uh, different uh, layers of things, depending on how deep you are somewhere. So... But just in terms of uh, us creating something here, um, you know, we want to create a little bit of a textural um, contrast, you know, so that things don't look exactly the same. You can go with uh, just one um, type in here if you want to, though. Um, one type of rock, you know, you don't have to use both of these, but um, if you have both of them, you can create, you know, a little bit more of a, a visual change, a textural change, like I said. And that expands on the, you know, the textural richness of a, of a piece. You can, you can have um, different contrasts with, uh, 
light and dark, uh, temperature, um, texture, intensity. There's, there's all kinds of things you can do. So it's not limited to, you know, just the imagery that we're stamping out. That being said, like I said, the imagery does give us a little bit of a head start to other types of things, okay? So you can see there's two different types of rocks. This one's going this way. This one's going this way. They do blend in pretty well together, though. Uh, happy to say, you know, which Stampscape stamps are designed to do. All right, this is the tall rock right here. It's more like El Capitan, you know, it's like whatever, what is it, 3,000 foot uh, rock in Yosemite, but I'm using it here for something else, of course. It's El Capitan-ish. I kind of expanded on it, um, you know, because I don't like anything too kind of iconic because it's like, you know, you want your stamps to be, be able to be used kind of in a general way and not just to represent one, you know, location. Or one specific location. Okay, I'm just masking off some of these lower rocks a little bit. I am kind of going right into them, though. I didn't mask off completely. So that rock goes down in that one over there a little bit. So you just kind of keep filling in with rocks, use them at different angles, and it uh, you just kind of keep building on your uh, your cave here. Okay, now see how I've layered these rocks here. And I have these, this rock's going across right here. Now I have these rocks. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask off these rocks. And this one, I'm gonna put another rock right in here. And that's gonna be their opening of our cave right up there. Let's go back to... Let's see, do I wanna go... This one will be a textural change again, right in here. Maybe I'll switch up. I'll go with this one here. Again, for that textural kind of change. You know, slightly different. So I'm masking off right here. And see, I'm kind of under masking it. You know, just so that I get some of the, uh, the merging of uh, the imagery. Because like I said, you know, the designs have been designed to be overlapped with one another and to create seamless, you know, seams. So overlapping with Stampscape stamps takes out the need for doing, you know, careful, super careful placement. It creates, you know, a, a overlapping friendly, placement friendly uh, type of system here. And, uh, you know, it takes out, I, I try to remove a lot of the tedium out of uh, stamping as much as I can. Uh, the stuff that could be considered tedium, uh, i.e. masking and all that type of thing. Um, 
I don't know, to me that's not like the fun part of stamping. Um, you know, ser you know, super careful placement of everything. Um, having to watch for, you know, certain types of things. Um, it, it, I don't know, but you know, uh, the thought of being careful about something isn't terribly appealing to me. I'd rather, you know, freedom, ease, all those types of, you know, <laughs> descriptions are a lot more, um, uh, yeah, appealing to me as a user of the stamps, okay? So when I'm designing my stamps, I do so accordingly because I want it to be easy for me to use too. I don't want to have to do employ a bunch of extra things. If I can take it out in the design itself, I could remove those things in the, uh, the designing process um, I do. So I take a lot more time on my designs um, than just the drawing part of it. It's kind of breaking things down um, to make it as easy as possible for everyone to use. Okay, so I have this little gap in here that I just need to fill in, and I think we should have a good foundation right here. I'm going to go this way with the stamp right in here. Our masking materials can be too much, you know, simpler, right? And there's a rip right there. See how that kind of goes along right in there? And then I'll just kind of mask off right in here, like about like so. I'm kind of keeping about, uh, maybe it's about a quarter inch of the uh, imagery showing, okay? Okay, now see I have that little space in there. And it kind of like that. See that little opening right there? I don't know if I'm getting all the way in there, but even if it isn't, it's, you know, it's in there enough, which is fine. And now we have our cave of a, uh, you know, mystery and riches like that. This opening might be a little bit large. I'm gonna think I'm gonna put a little character there, or let's see. I, I think maybe maybe my explorers can go there. But I think let me see. No, yeah, maybe I'll leave it like that. I was thinking about putting another little bit of this right here, right here. Uh, which maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll still do that. I want my opening of my cave to be, you know, pretty dimensional as well, so let's see, look like this. There. I kind of didn't stamp it right there because I want that nice and light, okay? All right. Now, that brilliance thing could be used to tone in, but like I said, I don't have as much control over, you know, this on some sort of applicator as I do with just taking a colored pencil like this. Now, some of this ink, it might be a little bit damp. I'm not sure. Probably not. So I can apply this black colored pencil. It's just a Prisma color, so... Um, it's a fairly soft one here, but I'm, I wanted to define um, some of these rocks in here a little bit more now that I know where they're stamped at. So um, I could see some shadows and some areas right in here. And if I've applied some of that brilliance ink, either the white or black, in back of these objects in an area where I want to tone them in and add some of that shading, then I can do that. Isn't that really, isn't that a fun uh, service? So, I mean, you can do this on white paper, 
I mean, but look at that. That is like some instant visual interest if you just do it on if we're doing all this on uh you know existing really cool paper so if, if you gave this to someone they would they wouldn't know how you did that they they would think that you stamped it on white paper and you've applied this into your scene somehow you know and you could say yeah it's this new technique that you learned on the stampscape channel <laughs> yeah you just, it was a white card stock i'm just joking Okay, so this is right here. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of tone right in there. Just kind of block some of this off a little bit like that, like a little shadow, kind of making this area look a little bit, you know, lighter. I was mentioning this in my live stream last night, but I'm just kind of reiterating a lot of the light and shade that are that's inherently in the designs okay so you can see some of these areas of these rocks this is supposed to be like texture like lichen here but you can see where this goes from you know light to dark right up here but see this shadow in between so you just kind of add some more shadow to that you know i'm using a black pencil but i'm not necessarily going for black i'm just going for a very light application of it like a little bit of a gray scale. So I'm just making my shadows look a little bit deeper. See how that looks deeper now? Okay. Now it looks strange there because it's the only area that I've just shaded in. So I'm going to do that over a lot of these different rocks and hopefully make them look uh, more dimensional like that. See how that? It's really giving those rocks body there. And it just, it just takes very little time. Okay, now here's this rock right here here up here and this rock is right here okay you see where that image is right there and then this one is right over the top of it okay so let's create um some it's a textural differentiation between this rock and this rock but let's make it um well let's differentiate them a little bit with a little bit of tone as well so we can kind of separate them that way and again you're just doing it very lightly uh, don't start going on here like this and say wait okay i'm just adding on like when you're adding on this much you can barely see any difference don't say wait i can't see anything so i got to do this you know if you want to get that dark you can but just kind of build it up nice and gradually like this and see I'm going like that and now I'm that dark right but if I'm doing it kind of in that gradual very light application you know then you want to take a look at it and you know see if you like it or not then you can add more but that way you don't have um, kind of applications of media that kind of sneak up on you where it's like you're regretful that you added it you know or added it to in a certain amount you know as long as you just kind of you, got, you, you know we're, we're when i'm doing this i'm just kind of looking in one little i don't know quarter inch area because i'm focusing on my tip so you have to kind of hold it out and see what it's looking like okay you know just as you go along so every you know a few seconds kind of or you're just you just change your focus you know as i'm doing this i'm looking at where i'm applying it but then my attention goes from here, it's going like this and here and that, you know, as I do it. Now, that being said, you know, as I'm doing this, I don't know what I want this to look like. So I don't have this kind of end result in mind. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of tone as I go. Um, you know, and watching it develop. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I mean, this is kind of, you know, I had this whole concept in mind, but like the specifics, I, I didn't know, you know, how it was going to look after I applied, you know, my brilliance, black and white in the background. I didn't know what that was going to look like. 
And then once I, you know, started stamping my image, yeah, I kind of, you know, had a, an idea of what imagery I was going to use. But as I stamp one down, it's like make my assessment, do I want to go with this other rock over the top of it? You know, and the answer isn't always like 100% yes, okay? In my mind, it might be, yeah, you know, like 70% maybe, you know, or probably, or, you know, something like that. And just, okay, let's take a look, you know, that type of thing. You, you know, sometimes when I get farther along, um, there are some things that reveal themselves a little bit more definitively, okay? Um, uh, but that doesn't usually happen until kind of later on. And then the, when I'm doing a lot of experiments like this, you know, with new media, it might not be... I might not know kind of a, the direction, you know, something's going to go in. Um, you know, with a lot of the detailing. And the detailing is, some, you know, something's, you know, a big, big part of it. Um, but sometimes I don't, I can't really see it um, come together until maybe the last few uh, techniques or applications of something, you know, that that's happening on it. So feel fun, you know, uh, you know, um, give yourself kind of permission to, to play and discover and, uh, define too. It's not, uh, kind of this, you know, that creation and creativity. It's, it's not always this one single track, you know, that leads us to, you know, one definitive kind of outcome. So, uh, the best part is, you know, is when you, you know, you get, kind of follow some of these, uh, lessons or something like that. And, uh, that's a great way to learn something, kind of just follow along and, uh, do that. But then at some point in time, you know, when you start doing, uh, your own compositions, um, you learn to kind of listen to your piece that whatever you're working on and kind of go in the direction it wants you to go in um, rather than just trying to force it into um, kind of a preconceived notion or something like that of the initial uh, kind of a uh, goal maybe and i have to do that too a lot of times you know i might have kind of a you know a lot of times like like i said I don't, most of the times i have rough ideas um, but, but still, you know, occasionally even with me, I'll, you know, I'll have to change up a lot and I do have to get, you know, I have to, all this, these things that I'm kind of saying here, those are the things that I'm reminding myself, um, about, you know, so I, I guess the big thing is, it's just, you know, kind of remain, uh, flexible, um, or as, as flexible as you can be. All right, so this is where this cave is kind of looking right now. See, it's, uh, there's that vignette on the, you know, the perimeter like that. Okay. But look at that beautiful surface like that. It really adds to that whole kind of cave look. Okay, now I'm looking at this. I'm trying to make my assessment in terms of uh, light and shadow on here. This area gets a little bit heavy with shadow right here. That's probably where I put some of that black ink over there. So I'm going to kind of bring some of this, make this area out here a little bit darker. I, on this cave one, um, I, when I was thinking about this piece in relation to um, the piece that I did before, you know, in my ice cave, I was thinking I want this one to probably to be a little bit darker. 
um, again with the idea in mind that I probably want to utilize some of this uh, material in here. You know, that type of uh, rock in here. I mean, I think these gems are going to look really cool, you know, on the walls of these caves right in here. Last time, I, I don't think I used those, but I, I did do some, I don't know, things that represented diamonds in another uh, cave before, uh, cave setting. But I really like the look of this right here, too, just, just on its own. But I just think that extra bling is going to be really something um, kind of visually uh, seductive. What I mean by that is, you know, if someone's looking at something and it, it makes them kind of want to do something like, you know, stones in here that are reflective, it might cause someone to either do this in the light with it or like physically touch it you know so you want to make these pieces kind of trigger those types of responses from the the viewer or the recipient you know of our cards or you want to have some kind of uh you know kind of a you want to it have emotional impact right Okay, let's see right here. Let's give this a little bit more depth up here. This uh, printable vinyl sticker paper and uh, colored pencils, uh, brilliance and colored pencils is just, I find it to be a stunning combination to work with. First of all, you know, just being able to use colored pencils on any type of metallic is really amazing because colored pencils, you know, they have kind of a, there's a soft look to it. And when you're talking about metallics, there's a sharpness to it. And then you get into, you know, the holographics or something like that, that are super dynamic and, um, you know, in this case, patterned right here. And just the ability to do these controlled types of soft looking applications of media on top of it. It's just so much fun and I don't know. I think it's amazing. It's it's amazing, you know, that we can I don't know, have this type of thing. They didn't have printable vinyls, sticker papers, um, as far as I know. You know, I don't, I don't know if they even had it. I don't know. Did they have it five years ago even? It, it might have been out there. I don't know if they, they had the holographics, though. I would imagine they probably had the white ones, you know, that people are printing stuff out and sticking it to, I don't know, mugs and stuff like that. But um... All right, so that's what it looks like without, like if we just did it on, like, white pieces of, a white piece of paper or something like that. <laughs> I do like the look of that though. But then you go, you know. <laughs> I mean, that stuff is really coming to life like that. You can have this on some sort of rotating thing like this. You know, it's spinning around. Um, those luminaires or something like that. I think if I took this off, this back back paper, I think this is kind of more see-through. You can put it on, make that luminaire out of it or something like that. And, you know, if it's kind of spinning around like that, it might be kind of interesting. Okay, so I think this is, uh, I think this is it as far as my foundation goes in part one of this uh, scene. Um, like I said, I'm going to make this into a... Um, a reflective, um, kind of more of a horizon card. I don't think I'm going to put silver down here. I think I'm going to use, you know, more of this uh, type of holographic down here for my water like that. It's not going to be tropical with palm fronds, you know, but it, 
you can see my uh you know my imagery down there but i'm going to have like rocks in the water down here and then there's going to be some of those rocks sticking in the water and then we'll see where we can place uh i want any excuse to add some additional kind of elements into this uh composition right here that will kind of enhance it uh you know some might be a little bit overkill but uh, we're going to try to throw in the uh, the kitchen sink in some ways into this piece and make it really really dynamic and fun so can't wait to uh get to some of those little detailing types of things but the second thing i'll do is i'll work on this lower section down here see look at this i don't i barely have any kind of like ink on my hands this is like real kind of inky you know with black ink all over that but you get this holographic uh uh printable vinyl in it you know my brilliance inks really stuck to it so all i'm doing is i'm going with a colored pencil and that's not like charcoal or anything like that so it's really sticking to it pretty well so you can tell my hands are reasonably you know clean uh from doing this type of process right here so all right well so hopefully we'll see you on the uh part two of this uh i don't know whatever uh cave of uh dreams dream cave <laughs> thanks for watching